Hello folks and welcome to Real Estate q and I'm your host Greg Delane. Our mission here on the show is to answer frequently asked questions and to help people who are selling their homes and buying their homes understand the process of real estate. Uh, our guests are experienced professionals in their field and of course experience is the difference. Today on my show I have a friend that I've known for a while. He's helped me. He's a fantastic attorney and I always try to get people that their name is on the door. His name is on the door and I'd like to introduce you to Larry Delgado. Good to be here Greg. Larry thanks so much for coming to the show. Could you tell me just a little bit about uh, your business, where you're located, sure. how long you've been in the business, things of that nature? Um, our firm, uh, Greg, is Delgado and Delgado, and that's because my wife and I, Anita and I, are the two attorneys, the two partners in the office. Uh, we're located right here in the middle of uh, White Plains downtown on Martine Avenue. We've been uh, here um, about 15 years uh, in White Plains. It's our only office. Uh, we are general practitioners, but we handle a lot of real estate, um, as this area has a lot of uh, real estate transactions. There's, there's a lot of uh, uh, real estate business. It's a wonderful place to live here in Westchester, so people um, gravitate towards, uh, towards this area. That's, that's, I will say this, that uh, my dealings with his office, one thing that uh, stands out in my mind is that uh, their office gets back to you. And in this business, when you make a call and there's something that has to be resolved, Larry's office will get back to you. Now, it might not be in 10 minutes, but he'll get back to you later that day. And in this business, the callbacks mean so much. The callback is everything. And in the law business, it, it's also. And, and that is really one of the main uh, criteria for client satisfaction. Can they reach someone to tell them the status of their transaction or their case? Uh, so I always try to make, uh, make it a point to get back to the person that same day. Uh, the other thing is we are backed up at our office with wonderful assistants, and they make me look good. I think I speak to Luz more than I speak to you, Larry, but that's okay. I know she's on top of things, and it's a fantastic office. Uh, you do a lot of... Uh immigration legalization things of that nature too don't you that is correct uh, we practice a lot of immigration and naturalization law and we uh, help uh, a lot of people uh, eventually become uh, US citizens and um, it, in many ways it's uh, very similar to uh, real estate yeah. uh, I always say uh, when you buy real estate you're getting a piece of the rock <laughs> and um, in many ways uh, becoming a US citizen uh, that is really uh, the biggest p piece of the rock sure. because this is the best place to live and, and raise a family and, 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 and uh, have a business and so on. Absolutely. Uh, Larry, if, if a guy like me can do it, <laughs> anybody can do this. I, I want to get right to our topic, to to today's topic. Uh, and these are questions emailed to my website. My website is DelaneRealty.com. I get these questions emailed. I hear these questions all the time when people want to buy a home or are thinking about selling, but today we have not covered on my show yet condos and co-ops. What is the difference? That's the first question because people always want to know what's the difference. Well, that's a very good question, and, and there are major differences between co-ops and condos. Um, they both are ways of owning real property. However, the difference is let's take a condominium. With a condominium you are what is called the fee owner, owner of the property directly. There's a deed in your name that says you are the owner of that condominium space. Now condominium space may be similar to a one-family house for example where you own actual land and uh, however it could also be uh, airspace and your apartment may be on the 10th floor of a building but yet you own on the deed that airspace where, where your unit is is built 
So you own that real estate directly. You uh, can transfer it by executing a deed. You can mortgage that property. It's a hybrid situation because unlike a single family home, for example, mm -hmm. where you own the entire uh, property there, your lot, the land, in a condominium you generally own in fee title, means you're the owner of your space, whether it's airspace or land space or whatever, but you also own a certain percentage of the common areas. Let's say the building has hallways, has uh, parking areas, has uh, recreation facilities, so you also own a certain percentage of the common areas. And there's a board of managers and they manage those common areas on behalf of the condominium. A co-op is different. You still own um, uh, ultimately real property, but very much indirectly, because what you as the owner own, you are a shareholder, you own stock in a corporation, and that corporation owns the real estate, the building, the land, etc. That corporation and, and uh, uh, the corporation has um, directors, and that's the board of directors, they manage that building. But by virtue of you as a shareholder owning those shares, you have the right to occupy, to use a certain apartment mm. in that co-op. And now there are differences. Ultimately, you own and occupy a piece, an apartment, a space, etc. But the type of ownership is really the difference. In condo, you own directly via a deed. You pay the taxes directly to the taxing authority. You can sell uh, your unit by executing a deed. You mortgage it. You go to the bank and you mortgage that property. With a condominium, it is indirect. What you take uh, with you after the closing is a share certificate, a stock certificate. Mm. has your name on it. Yes. You own stock in that building. Okay. You know, it, w when I first got into the business of real estate, I think the only way I was able to explain the difference, uh, or when I spoke of condos, I would say, listen, it's a house up in a building, and it's connected with the taxes and everything, but I owned a co-op before I moved into my house. And I went to board meetings, right. uh, and it's, you know, on the other side of this, I've often tried to sell them, and I've had to tell the other realtor or the other broker, the word co-op means cooperative. Let's work That's together right. and get That's this thing right. done. But we were governed by a board, That's right. and uh, it works both ways. I, I thought that the building that I lived in was fantastic. They had pool, concierge. Sometimes I think you get a little more uh, amenities with the co-op opposed to the condo. Uh, the co-op that I was in had a 24-hour concierge. They had pool, gymnasium, and for a very good price. Right. For, but I know that they had rules about renting and things of that nature. Well, in, in a, in a co-op, you have a board of directors, and that board of directors uh, operates uh, pursuant to a, a set of bylaws. Okay. And the bylaws are all the rules that govern how that board functions. Under the law, that board of directors has tremendous power. They can set the rules, they can uh, determine uh, the expenses, uh, the budget of the uh, co-op uh, mm -hmm. corporation, um, what their um, house rules will be, when you take out the garbage, when you cannot, how you can sell, wow. uh, everything. Now that's good and bad. The good is that you have a, a, a group of very dedicated individuals who are looking out to make this and keep this co-op building mm -hmm. a very good place to live. The rules that they are uh, imposing on everyone, on all the cooperators, is for the common good. Yes. The downside is that you may be at odds with the board, particularly on the sale of your unit. And that also, that's a major difference between a condo and a co-op. And a condo, as I said before, you execute a deed, I execute a deed to you, and you're now the owner of my condo. <laughs> In a co-op, we've got to go to that board and make sure that you uh, are uh, checked out financially yes. and, and uh, they want you in as, 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 as a neighbor there and, and uh, 
uh, you're not going to be a problem over there, and, and whatever review they do, yes. but without their okay. okay, there's no sale. Well, I, I, I likened buying the co-op to joining a health club. That's right. Because it was like a resort, a golf resort. They had to accept me based on how they saw me. That's right. And, and my financial position and how things. So I was, uh, I was in front of a, uh, a court, if I, um, a jury. Uh, there's always an application. Yes. And the application has to be completed very, very carefully because how it's presented uh, imparts a view of yourself. Uh, they always want uh, your income taxes and reference letters. Every co-op is different, and then they sit and review it. I always tell my clients that uh, when they're buying a co-op, um, I say to them, if you're not approved, don't be offended. Madonna was rejected by a co-op board in Manhattan. Ah, and she's got a few bucks. So it's not always bucks. They may not want the notoriety or the attention of a Madonna living there. Yeah. And that's what they look at. Um, Maybe that's why they didn't want me at the co-op. I'm a notoriety. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Larry, let me ask you this question. Here's, here's one of the questions. Uh, as a practical matter, are there any significant advantages or dif disadvantage, disadvantages to a co-op or condo ownership? Uh, there are, and, and uh, the major one is uh, what I uh, indicated just now, that um, how you can um, transfer ownership to someone else okay. so that in, in, in a condo um, it is a much easier uh, mechanism. There's always one restriction in a condominium and that is uh, the condo has the right of first refusal. So if you have a buyer of a condo, you must offer that condo uh, the opportunity to waive its right to buy your unit at the price that you're selling it. Now, uh, I've never seen that right exercised, and it keeps, uh, I guess it keeps, uh, for appraisal purposes, uh, ensures that condos may not be sold below market because it'll affect all sure. the other uh, units there at that condo. But if it's an arm's length uh, transaction uh, in the open market, uh, you present uh, the information to the condo board and they will give you uh, their waiver of that right of first refusal and you go ahead and sell. Uh, in a co-op, co as I mentioned, you need the co-op board to review your prospective purchaser, um, to approve the, the purchase, and then to agree to set up a closing so that the stocks may be transferred via the co-op. It's not a direct transfer from seller to buyer. It is, there's an intermediary and that is the transfer agent who will make the transfer of the shares in the stock book of the corporation. Okay. So we have an extra party. The other major uh, point, uh, condos versus co-ops, uh, is I always tell my clients, I always ask, do you intend to live there? Mm -hmm. If you intend to live there, there's probably very little difference between a condo and a co-op. If you intend to rent or to have this uh, unit as an investment, yes. there are major differences. Co-ops, as I said before, the co-op boards will make rules for the common enjoyment of uh, the, the cooperative, and they generally have rules uh, that restrict your right to sublet, to rent, uh, to rent to, a, um, uh, to not live there. Why? A very good reason. The building, the co-op, wants as many owners to live there. An owner will take better care of their sure. apartment, will sure. be better neighbors perhaps, will, will, um, will add to, uh, uh, will participate in the board activities sure. uh, as opposed to the renter. So um, there's that restriction and that's very important. But if, if your purpose is to live there, um, again, I, I, I say that the co-op board is there for the common enjoyment and building. betterment of, of yeah. the building. Now, I know when my wife and I sold our co-op, we thought about renting it, and I almost got into a situation with the co-op because they wanted me to prove hardship. And my idea of hardship was the fact that we paid this amount for the co-op, and the market wasn't that strong then, and I was hoping I could rent a couple of years so the market would come back, but the co-op board 
saw hardship as a, another child and not enough room. We owned the Junior Four, and there were more people in the building that bought it with uh, extra bedroom, now had two children, and needed to rent to get out. To, so, uh, and, and, and I understand it now, but then I said, are you trying to explain to me what hardship is? Hardship <laughs> is not being able to get my money out of this thing. Come on. Well, they'll tell you that uh, you can get your money, put it on the market, sell it. Yeah. And uh, most of the rules uh, uh, are very, very onerous on, mm -hmm. on rentals. Uh, they may say, um, uh, we'll let you rent for a limited period, one year, yes. two years. Let's yes. say, for example, you work for a, uh, a major corporation. They transfer, transfer. you oh, somewhere okay. else. And, uh, but your intent is to come back after the one-year okay. service abroad or in another city. Uh, so they'll let you rent, uh, they'll interview your prospective uh, renter, mm -hmm. and they'll do the same analysis as if it was a, uh, a purchase. Uh, they may also charge you a certain uh, fee yeah. uh, on top of what you pay in maintenance uh, as a sublet fee uh, as well. I guess they're saying, listen, if you're making a few extra bucks on the rental, we'll take a piece of that as well. And, <laughs> beautify the lobby and, and paint the halls, et cetera. Everybody takes a bite out of the apple. Huh? So it, 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 it's very important that the person understand that uh, uh, their right to rent um, is, is, is very, very, very limited. Okay. And, and the other, by the way, okay. are pets. Uh, Co-ops um, generally restrict uh, pets, particularly dogs. Cats uh, have a better uh, time at it. Um, but uh, any, I always ask uh, the client, do you have any pets, any yes. dogs? I've seen rules, uh, for example, on weight uh, limits. Yes. Well, you can have a small dog, but you can't have a dog of um, more than 80 pounds. And then you wonder, how do you get that dog on the scale to weigh them? <laughs> um, but uh, those are the rules that are I effect. sold a condo in White Plains off of Battle Avenue. And I, I try not to mention places, but the, the deal happened, and the guy rented the place. And it, all, the whole deal broke down to the interview of his dog. And the owners were there, and it's a dog-friendly building. And the guy said, well, my dog's like 10 years old. He doesn't bother anybody. But we were all standing out in front of this building for his dog to get out of the car. And the, right. the, the seller of the place had a dog, too. And because the dogs met each other and wagged their tails, the guy had signed the paper. I said, this is amazing. Only in New York. I don't think they do that in California where I'm from. Real quickly, I need to know about maintenance fees and what do they cover? Uh, maintenance fees, again, applies uh, to uh, co-ops. Mm -hmm. um, common charges apply to condominiums. But let, let's look at co-ops. Um, the owner of the building is that corporation. They're charged with operating that building from A to Z. Uh, so that in what they do is uh, the co-op board will prepare an annual budget. How much do we have to spend for payroll, the superintendent, the cleaning, the snow removal, the insurance, the taxes, um, repairs, um, upkeep, uh, cleaning, every single expense that you and I would have at our own home. Yes. Put it all together, divide by the number of shares, and then allocate that budget, that expense, to all the shareholders, and that will be their expected maintenance for the following year. Mm -hmm. It includes, um, also includes, uh, many co-ops have uh, an underlying mortgage that they're still paying. So that's included also mm -hmm. in the maintenance. Um, and you've also heard that, uh, well, the maintenance, uh, part of it is uh, tax deductible on your income taxes. Yes. And why is that so? Well, because two components of the maintenance are tax deductible. One is property taxes, mm -hmm. real estate taxes that the co-op, the same as you and I in a one-family house, will pay city tax, school tax, county tax, village tax, et cetera. Those are tax deductible, and you'll get a notice at the end of the year from the co-op so you can take that uh, amount that you've paid in real estate taxes. And the other component is interest on a loan, on a mortgage that the co-op is paying. So you will have as a shareholder, owner of one apartment in that building, you'll have your own loan yes. for when you p bought that unit. 
and interest on that loan is tax deductible, as well as the real estate taxes that are, be, that are flowing from the co-op being allocated to you, as well as the interest on the co-op's mortgage. Wow. So those three things will be tax deductible. So you get, you get tax breaks? You get tax breaks uh, for ownership, uh, the same as owning uh -huh. any real property. And the benefit of that is, as opposed to renting, where mm -hmm. you get no tax break and no ownership interest whatsoever. So the benefit to co-op ownership or condo ownership above rental is so evident, and it's, it's, it's so clear. Thank you, Larry. We, we're running kind of short out of time. Time moves fast when you're with somebody that's knowledgeable and a friend of yours. Look. I want to know, there were a couple co-ops that I tried to get somebody into, and they weren't financially sound. And the attorney said that I really don't want you getting in. How does a co-op building become not financially sound? And I know you look for that. We do. And, and uh, when there is a real estate transaction and I'm representing a buyer, um, the attorney for the buyer will request uh, certain co-op documents to be delivered to him or her for review. Uh, probably the most important one are the financial statements, and we generally review the last two years. Uh, and we look for certified financial statements. Uh, the co-op has a, an accountant mm -hmm. uh, who will prepare, uh, on behalf of the co-op, the financial statements. What you try to look at are what are the nature of the expenses? Are they in line with what a co-op should be spending? Okay. Are they spending? Um, so much on legal fees mm. that that it raises eyebrows. Why are they involved in any litigation? For yeah. example, uh, are repairs, uh, costs of repairs, um, exceeding what you would normally consider uh, reasonable? Um, and the other uh, thing you you really want to look at uh, are the reserves. Uh, like uh, like any uh, ownership. Uh, co-ops can be subject to emergency expenses. Are they prepared? Do they have a reserve fund that is big enough so that if the boiler breaks down and needs to be repaired or replaced or the roof is leaking and needs repairs, um, is that reserve fund available so that the co-op doesn't have to go to the shareholder and ask for more money? And um, uh, so those are the things. The financial condition of, of the co-op is very important. It's important for the buyer, uh -huh. and his attorney will review that. It's also important for the bank, who is lending that prospective buyer some money. I've had situations where the bank didn't lend because the co-op had more renters than they had owner-occupied, and they felt that if the people were foreclosed on, they wouldn't be able to rent it. That's right. So uh, the, uh, the banks uh, will generally have a form, a co-op review form, where they want information about the co-op. How many units? Um, how long has it been in existence? How long have they been operating? How many people own it? How many people are renting? And as we said before, a renter, the bank sees that as, 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 as a potential liability. It may be that a block of rental units are owned by the original sponsor. Why, um, if that original sponsor who owns a large share goes into bankruptcy and there's a foreclosure, they may be an extended period when no income is coming in. So it's a much safer um, lending situation for a bank when it's majority, primarily um, owner-occupied. Yeah. And um, uh, the banks also look at the financials. What are the expenses? Are they, is there a reserve fund that is large enough? Uh, is the maintenance uh, uh, covering the, the, uh, the ongoing expenses without going into one-time uh, fees or one-time charges or yes. assessments? So the, the financial review is very, very important for both the buyer and the, and the lender. Larry. Uh well, our time is almost up. You've been very insightful. I hope the people out there learned some things about this. I want them to know that, uh, that Delgado and Delgado know a lot about this business. And the more I learn about the real estate business, the more I find out I don't know. But I always call people that have the knowledge. And, and I always say experience is the difference. Thank we're you. at my pop quiz now. Larry, we're almost wrapping up. I got five questions for you. 
I'll make the answers quick. Favorite sport? Probably golf. Okay. And I'm, right. not that I'm any good at it, but I'm still practicing. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite sports team? There I differ. I, I, I go to the uh, Miami Dolphins. Okay. Uh, I uh, grew up with them. I used to... Uh, 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 go to their games when nobody else would go to their games. Well, uh, they had a good run for a while because Dan Marino was, uh, but he never won the big one. Well, I go further back than that. Okay. The <laughs> team of 1972. Undefeated. Undefeated. Yeah, okay. That's right. All right. If you could do anything other than your profession, what would that be? Probably working with my hands as a carpenter. I love to create. Mm -hmm. um, uh, working with wood would be absolutely uh, 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 heaven to me. Last question. Many years from now, when you leave this earth and we're, we're no longer here, what do you want people to say about Larry Delgado? Well, that, that, uh, that he gave uh, uh, his all, that uh, he tried to do good, that uh, uh, at the end of the day he helped uh, people um, in, in, in one capacity or, or another, um, and uh, that he was an honest man, that he yeah. always called it the way he saw it, didn't pull punches, and... and uh, uh, you got a straight answer uh, from him um, the way it is. Thank you, Larry. I, I, I want people to know that uh, experience is the difference, and I don't want to use a part-time doctor or a, a guy who uh, drives the truck in the daytime and at night he's a dentist. You have to deal with professionals. Delgado and Delgado are certainly professionals in this business. Uh, the three biggest decisions that you'll ever make in your life financial decisions are marriage, children, and home ownership. Now the first two, marriage and children, they don't come with directions. You got to learn as you go. But when you're speaking of real estate, it does come with directions. And there's people that you can speak to. Uh, you can get the answers. You can always call us or, or, or call Larry. I'm sorry, call Larry Delgado, or you can email me and I will get that question on the air and see if we can work it out. Uh, Larry, again, thank you so much. Greg, a pleasure being here. Yeah. Really yeah. enjoyed uh, it. This is, uh, this is pretty nice. My next show, uh, we'll answer some more questions and uh, see what we can get to the bottom of. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.